Hey, everybody, welcome to this MTN Sports production of Facebook Live. We're talking with Grizzly legends leading up to the 2023-2024, rather, FCS National Championship game between the University of Montana Grizzlies for the first time since 2009 and the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. I'm going to introduce our guest today. You know him. You love him. Uh, he really needs no introduction. We're going to give him one anyway. Montana Hall of Famer, NFL Pro Bowler, Haver High School tennis champion. That's one of my favorites. Ooh. Always has been. Yeah, Ooh, back the nice. day. Doubles, right? Doubles tournaments, I believe. Yeah, that's exactly right. Two <laughs> yeah. time, two time. Two time, two time tennis champion. Um, father of two these days. Am I correct on that? Yeah, they're that's right. They're running me ragged. We got a three year old <laughs> and a five year old. So the house awesome, for the holidays man. was uh, very festive. Yeah, well, let, let's start there just as we wait for some more folks to hop on the Facebook Live. How, how's life these days in Nashville and, and how were your holidays? Yeah, it's great, man. Just you nailed it. I'm just raising these two little ones. Uh, my five year old uh, boy's name's Maverick. He's uh, he's a wild beast, man. I don't know where he gets it. He's just go, go, go all the time. Um, I might know where he gets it, but um, uh, so we our, our our house is just full of madness at all times. Um, and then his little sister, who's three now, she's a riot as well. Um, and so they're uh, they're doing great. And you know, I think anyone who was up there at the end of October for our little Hall of Fame deal um, got to see they were on the field with me, and they're getting to the age where they're starting to uh, remember those things and recognize those things, and they sing the Grizz fight song with me before every game. <laughs> Uh, and so it's gotten really fun to share some of these memories with them. Uh, and so anyway, leading up to Christmas, we had to make sure they were both on the nice list, which was tough to do. And then, uh, yeah, Santa treated us well and life is good. Awesome, man. Awesome. What was the best Christmas gift you got? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, that's hard to say. I mean, we, we, the, those kids got pretty spoiled, um, but, uh, you know, the, the best Christmas prank I got from Santa was I had to repair the brakes on uh, on my car. And so that was a real fun Christmas present to buy the day after Christmas. Uh, so I can't really think that one's planted in my head. Um, that's not a fun bill to get right after the holiday season. I was like, no, this can't be real. But uh, no, we're blessed, man. And uh, lots of gifts, too many gifts. Awesome. Awesome. Happy for you guys. All right. Let's talk some Chris football. I know you were back in October for the Hall of Fame ceremony, uh, but how much uh, Grizz football have you been uh, able to watch this year down in Nashville? And what's it been like watching the 2023 uh, Montana Grizzlies? Oh, man, I try to tune in as much as possible. And this year, especially I've watched almost every game. I mean, it's it's there's been a few that slipped through the cracks, maybe. Um, but I've watched them, especially down the stretch here. And it's been just incredible, man. I, I, I've been watching my old coach, Bobby Houck, you know, since he's gotten back for his second time there at Montana. And, you know, I'm just old and washed up these days. Um, so now I'm just a cheerleader. And uh, so we tune in as much as possible. I wear the colors proudly. And it's been so fun to see this team come together uh, after a, a pretty big – road bump maybe you'd call it at, at northern arizona and i felt like and i'm sure looking back it's easy to say but i felt like you could use that for a couple different things you know that can kind of derail you or like they did they used it to come together and um, refocus and reset and they've been on a tear ever since so it's been fun to watch it's been so fun to talk so much crap to all the Montana State Bob Kitties out there. Uh, so I just cherish that. I mean, I don't care if it's I'm in Nashville or Haver or Missoula or, you know, wherever across the world, I'll find a Montana State Bobcat to chirp every once in a while. And, and we owed him one this year because uh, I was on the field for game day last year, and that was not a pretty sight. We won't even bring that up, actually. Edit that. Wait, this is live. Never mind. <laughs> but, uh, so we owed him one after that whole deal. And so – that was fun. And this has just been exciting, man. I mean, like I said, old and washed up these days, but we're the colors very proudly. And so, you know, they're, they're holding that, they're carrying that flag now. And, and uh, it's an honor to, uh, to wear the colors around. I see. You know, there's been so many comparisons to that 2008 season uh, that you guys had. I mean, um, you know, you barely beat central Washington and you lose to Weber state, then you run the table to the championship game. Whereas this year's Grizz team uh, struggled against Ferris State, lost in Northern Arizona, and then kind of came together. 
Uh, from your experience going through a season like that, where, where everything does come together, what, what happens in the locker room? What, what are the vibes like? What has to happen to, to turn things around and, and get to yeah, man. And I think, I think if you um, were any coach or a player or whatever, you'd be, you'd be looking to bottle that up and figure it out and you could sell it. You could sell it for any number, but I think, and you can see on these guys' face, I think what's going on here is just an insane amount of confidence. I mean, they're playing with fast, fast, they're playing fast. They have tons of playmakers and they're playing for each other. And I think that's what I took away most from our 08, 09 season. There's my brother-in-law there. What a dime. That was my first <laughs> hug ever. Colorado, uh, Northern Colorado. Um, no, I think, I think really what's happened is it feels like at least is there's a total unselfishness on this football team. You know, the offense comes out and blows the doors off people sometimes, or the defense pitches a shutout, or as you've seen the last two weeks, they've been relying on, relying on special teams to make huge plays. And I think really – when I look back at my career, I think of those 08 and 09 teams and even 07, my sophomore year, but it was just a bunch of selfless guys who cared about each other, played for each other, really didn't believe we could be beat. And when you get that belief and that confidence rolling, I mean, good things happen. And, you know, I like to joke and it's true, really, we always lost the warm up battle. I mean, we were just a bunch of scrappy, a lot of Montana boys, and we would take the field looking at the other team and go, man, those boys have been hitting the weights now. We better strap it up this week. But, you know, what? what we were just disciplined, and we believed, and we loved each other, and I just feel like there's a lot of that going on in this locker room. There's a lot of um, team dynamic over the individual stuff. You got a freshman toting the rock at running back and you got a quarterback that came into his own. You got people making the a play, you know, whoever it is each and every week. And so I think that's what's happening is they found that groove. They found that confidence. They believe in each other. And uh, when you put it all together and play mistake free football, you can win a lot of football games. I see, you know, RTD has been the, the, the motto for this team since, since coach Howe came back. Um, do you feel like they've, they've reached that, the return to dominance? And, and just what do you make of the job that the Coach, Half, Coach Houck and the coaching staff have, have done to kind of turn this program uh, back into a national contender? Well, I think that's a really – I think I can get a good perspective of that um, down here because I don't get to see all the news or the press. I don't get to see all the stuff. I'm sort of an outsider looking in, and I think that has been a little bit disheartening the last few years is you, you look at it from an outsider – and you go, gosh, we're just, you know, we're limping through here. We're getting beat by the Cats. We're, we're not making deep playoff runs. And you do feel like what's going on. And you, and you can get outside of football and talk about enrollment and all this other stuff. And so you do a little bit feel like what's missing? What do we need? You know, return to what? Return to whatever that may be. And I'll tell you what it is, is it winning cures a lot of stuff. And um, a special team like this can really swing the momentum of a football program, um, you know, not only for the two 2023 season, but moving forward. And yeah, I think, I think it has been fun to watch them do that um, because, you know, like I said, looking at it from the outside, looking in, I want to be that dominant team. I need to talk. I need to talk. I got a, I got a mouth that goes a mile, hundred miles an hour. I had so many friends that I didn't even know about come out of the woodworks that went to Furman from down here. And so if I, if I could say, you know, thank you to the boys one time, because all of a sudden the Grizz are playing on ESPN and everyone's chirping me. And you know what? It wasn't just about money at that point. I need, I had a lot of pride on the line. I had bets go. I mean, it was, so you get, when you get removed from it, you get to see what, how it feels and what people are talking about. And I do think we needed to get back to the winning ways and being dominant and being on top of the ranking system mm -hmm. and, winning football games. And I think it will carry over with the momentum of the University of Montana and Missoula. I'm sick of talking about Bozeman and Montana State, all this stuff. We're, we're, we, you know, we're the king of the mountaintop and we have been since day one and, and it needs to be that way. So it's, it feels good to RTD. So South Dakota State coming in with a 28 straight game win streak, I think. However, Montana 8-0 all time against South Dakota State, including 
that 2009 game. I mean, everyone uh, knows you for it. Everyone talks about that one still, especially when South Dakota State's brought up. It was 48-21 in the third, and then you uh, take the ensuing kickoff to the house. We're going to watch the video. We have it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just just tell me about that game and, and that moment, and you know what what that meant to you to to get that win. Oh well, I mean, it meant everything because this was our senior class, and and now it's been documented, and we're the winningest class in the history of the Grizz. So we won a lot of football games. We're going into our senior year. We're ranked number one in the country all year. You know, it's so fun to be that team because you get the target is on your back every single week. And that is just the best feeling, you know, knowing that you're getting everybody's A game. But we come out here and they just start smacking us. And everything that, everything that, you know, everything goes wrong that is, you know, it has to go wrong. Look at tip pat. Well, that's us, I guess. But we didn't block. <laughs> so then we go into halftime, right? We're getting smacked around and the morale changes, right? We're rah, rah. We're going to figure it out. Don't worry about it, whatever. And we come out in the second half and get a punt blocked. Like the first thing we do is get a punt blocked and they return it for touchdown or they go score. And it was just one of those days, man, where you just felt like, what is going on here? But I got to be honest with you. And it, again, it's easy to say now, we never lost faith for one second. I mean, we there, there was a group of guys, our senior, we were on each other, on the sidelines. Offense was challenging the defense. Give us the ball. Give us the ball. And then you see this play right here. I never returned a kick. I didn't return hardly any kicks my senior year. But Coach Houck puts me back there this time. I don't know why, but look at me at the end of this play. We're down four touchdowns. I don't even celebrate. I'm just like, well, <laughs> I got to do that four more times because uh, we are so far down in this game. And it was one of those things where we knew you can't make it all up at once. You know, we got to start chipping away. There was only five, four or five minutes left in the third. Um, so we just got angry, man. And you just saw a bunch of dudes again, come together. I just love this team so much because a bunch of scrappy dudes, we graduated a great class from 08, our junior year. And then the seniors came and we had to fill some holes on the offensive line and at quarterback and, and whatever. And we just, we just played for each other, man. And we played unselfishly and, you know, this game meant a lot because we looked at each other and said, dude, this is not the way we're going to end our run, boys. It's not happening today. So it became pretty iconic. It shouldn't have gotten out of hand in the first place. Uh, but there's my brother, Chase Reynolds, absolutely dominating, taking over. And um, it was a pretty special day to be a Grizz. And um, like I said, we just we never lost faith, man. We believed in each other the whole way. Yeah. So certainly an, an electric return in that game. Um turn that game around. Uh, there's been an electric returner this year for the University of Montana Grizzlies, Junior Berg. And I, I remember when uh, he scored one of his touchdowns, I think against North Dakota State, you, you tweeted, I think it was just Junior Bergen. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you make That's of it? the job he's done and just how, how funny he is to watch? That's it. That's the headline. That's the tweet, man. That's the guy. He, I mean, he's the greatest. He, he broke every record. He's one of the most electric dudes to ever put the uniform on. Uh, you know, there's my boy, Billings, Montana kid. And he is just so, so fun to watch. You know, if I could walk into the UM bookstore right now, I'd buy that number five jersey, man. He's, he is, you know, one of the biggest playmakers in the country. And so um, I do think he's, he's going to go down in history as the greatest returner. But here's the thing. Big players make big plays in big games, man. And he has come alive. So what he's done in the last two weeks have will cement him, his legacy in – at the University of Montana, and he's got more plays to make. And so he's so fun to watch. I feel like the game has slowed down for him immensely. He, I couldn't believe, I was always a straight line guy, man. And what he does with the ball in his hand is so electric. He stopped and started in the middle of the field against NDSU. And you just felt like he had, he was pulling the strings. And I think his confidence level is so high and through the roof that what happens is in the return game, and we know this, guys. We all know Coach Houck is the return or he's the special teams guy, okay? And his, I drank the Kool Aid. I'm obsessed just like he is. But what's fun to watch is these guys have so much confidence in Junior Bergen that 10 guys on every play are selling out nonstop because you never know when this dude has a ball in his hand what's going to happen. And you don't want to be that guy 
that watches it on film that you missed that game changing block. And so it's a beautiful thing because you're taking the ball out from the from five yards deep in the end zone. You're not fair catching punts. You're returning these balls when sometimes you wouldn't. But this confidence level is through the roof. And I mean, the special teams play is not unlike any other play where you need all 10 guys busting it and they're just blocking for this dude, man. And so I, he's got to get the ball in his hands as much as possible on Sunday. Uh, but it's been an honor to watch him. And I don't like even getting compared to him because he's better than I ever was, man. He's, he's got it all. He's got the full package and I can't wait to see more of him on, uh, on the seventh. I see. You know, and uh, when you were back in, in Missoula for the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony in October uh, or even throughout the season, have you had a chance to, to talk to the players or any of the team? And, and, and what have those interactions been like for you? I, I saw the guys last year, actually. I haven't seen them this year. Um, and I'm a, I'm an old man these days. so I don't even know if that many guys. I mean, there's a few guys left that remember uh, watching this skinny little punk back in the day. But, um, you know. So, so there's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction. I, I like to hit up the guys uh, after they're done and let them know that I'm always here for them if they need anything. Um, you know, some of the some of the guys that have gone on and and played after. Um, so I'm always a resource. But you know, like I said, I'm on the sidelines now, just cheering these guys on. I respect the heck of what they do and 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 what they have accomplished. Um, and so I'm, I'm just proud of them. And I, honestly, I'm I'm just. I'm just honored to wear the colors and these guys are making us old timers very, very proud. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been fun to watch. Yeah. As someone who's, who's had a lot of success in the maroon and silver, what would your advice be for, for this year's team as, as they head to Frisco for the FCS championship? Well, it's interesting you say that because it would probably be my, my biggest advice, which is, you know, <laughs> whether you win this game or lose this game, you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. And uh, unfortunately for me and my teammates, we are 0-2 uh, in Chattanooga at, at the big game. And that absolutely guts me thinking about that. And so, you know, if I had a chance to, to talk to the team or whatever, I would say leave everything out on the field. I mean, I think they, they should have to carry you off the field because there's nothing left after this. And, and I think you get caught up in the moment, you get caught up in the pageantry and you get caught up in the celebration and, and all the stuff and, you know, all the pregame and the big noise and everybody talking about you. And I think at the end of the day, man, just know that it's going to live with you forever. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I could have done one more thing. I could have made one more play. I could have, I should have made that tackle. And, and I think on the, on the next step of that, of that is I would tell them, I just remember both games. Um, the first quarter just flies because you're thinking about all this stuff, the butterflies and all that stuff. The first quarter just goes nowhere. And I would say, don't wait, man. If you're, if you're, you know, on the kickoff coverage team, don't wait for, junior bergen or 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 you know any of the guys to make a play colton mcdowell don't don't or clifton mcdowell don't wait for these guys to make a play don't don't wait for the defense to get a big sack you make the first play right out the gate whoever it is whoever you are you have a huge block have a huge uh tackle whatever it is don't wait because i think if you i think what we're going to need to do on sunday is smack these guys in the mouth immediately and if you get caught up in the first few minutes of the game thinking about all this other stuff and, and worrying about the bugs. I think the, the first quarter can disappear on you or the momentum can shift. I would tell these guys, go be the guy to make the first play. Don't wait for anybody else. You go make the first hit, you go make it tackle the returner and get after them. And, and um, I think if guys have that mentality, you can just start stockpiling plays uh, and get that winning momentum starting early, early, because there's a lot of distraction at this game. You know, there's a lot of, off the field stuff that happens. I think when the whistle blows and that ball's kicked off, don't wait and leave it all out on the football field is what I tell these guys. All right. Because we have it, we have some high school footage of, of Mark <laughs> We're, we're going to play it out as, as we kind of wrap things up here. Um, <laughs> just because I want to see a reaction. I think it's like a couple plays of you in here. But uh, my, my final questions here are, are, what are your plans for watching the game? You go into Frisco and, and do you have any predictions? 
I am 100% going to Frisco, man. And I, so I will be there. Uh, this, this is the Haver Blue Ponies against Milling Central. You know, there's Ooh, your boy. Laying out. Skinny <laughs> little uh, walk-on. Walk I know, man. I, I, I made a few plays this day. I, think Wagner can sleep. To come. I mean, this brings out back <laughs> so many butterflies. I mean, Haver, Haver is just like a lot of towns in Montana. We're we're uh there's me making a tackle. Look at your boy <laughs> tackling the fullback. Um here it is right here. Oh no. Nope, nope. That's no, this uh, oh, escapes. All right. Sets it up. This is what sets oh, no. it up. Okay. Watch this. We're down here. We they get a roughing the they get a rough in the punter and the next play. Oh no, this is the one right before half. But okay. that's that's a house call right there. Yeah. All right. This oh. is back in the day where we had to get back for deadlines. So this <laughs> might be the last <laughs> video. I'm sure oh, a lot yeah. happened after this, but oh you know, no worries. There a lot is. of times it's getting up, shooting, leave at halftime, cut back for the, the 10 o'clock news, but oh maybe yeah, we got that, something here. That was no, right before halftime. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'll be in Frisco. I cannot wait. I'll be there for Saturday night to to hang and so I'll hopefully see you there. But I, I I cannot wait to watch this defense play. I know their defense is stacked, but these guys are savages and what I love, and it comes through the TV screen, is I see our defense just inflicting pain, wanting to tackle, wanting to hit you in the mouth, making every inch hard to gain. I love that. And so they've been a huge reason why we're where we're at, and I cannot wait to see them uh, play these Jackrabbits. And, but on the flip side, we got to do something about their defense as well. So if I had a prediction, I would say a low-scoring game with um, – a, a really tough style of football and two disciplined teams that it's going to be a black and blue physical battle in the trenches. And I think we get after them, but it's going to take every single play and it's going to take every single, uh, you know, point and it's going to be a special teams battle. Hopefully we get some big plays, big kicks. And if we're going to win, when we're going to win, it's going to be a low scoring affair that we're going to take this thing on the last play of the game with a game winning field goal. That's what I'm saying right now. Game winning field goal. There you have it. All right, Mark, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to chat with us. And of course, MTN Sports will be along for the ride to Frisco with the Montana Grizzlies. You can catch all of our coverage, including this conversation at montanasports.com. Thank you, Mark. And thanks for watching, everybody. Go, Grizz.